mostly I'm not going to touch on the analyzers, but the interpretation of the data that is coming out of these. And neonatal hematological values interpretations can be very, very problematic. What are our pediatricians asking for? Basically, they are just asking for three things. Is my baby anemic and jaundice? What is the cause? Is my baby septic? Is he septic or not? Is the baby septic? And if the baby is bleeding, is the baby bleeding due to what? So these are the basic three questions all pathologists and hematologists are being asked every day, every day then out. And these are emergency questions. You can't wait for four days or five days. The babies are so dynamic, every hour they change. So it's absolutely important to know and answer these three questions. How do we define anemia? We know that it is a reduction in the normal. I put it in red. You must know who is your population and why do you, what is normal in that population? And normal for the concentration of hemoglobin in that age and sex of your patient. Neonatal erythropoiesis is very different from the normal. They have just started making the blood and they have just come into the world. And these erythrocytes which are produced are fundamentally different from those produced by infant and children. So we must understand what are the cells that we are testing. These cells, please remember, have different membrane properties, different hemoglobins, a unique metabolic profile, and a much shorter lifespan. Instead of 120 days, they are 60 to 90 days life. So these cells are very different. How do you interpret these data in the light of these facts? So the problems in neonates are to define the normal hematologic values, which will depend on the gestational age of the baby. Now look at the parameters, which are the variables in your neonate. Age in hours. Is the baby just born or is the baby six hours old? will make all the difference to your normal values. Is the baby sick or is it a normal healthy neonate? And what is the level of support that the baby needs will decide what is normal for that particular baby. And what is most important is where are you testing the blood from? Is it the venous sample or is it a finger prick, heel prick sample. Because as I go along, you will see that it makes a lot of difference in your interpretation when you are collecting blood from these neonates. Let's look at this baby who is just full term, normal neonate, day one, just about 24 hours old. Hemoglobin is 17 grams, 18,900 WBCs with 1,80,000 platelets, retic of 8% with hyperbill, 14 total and one indirect, a bit, one direct. SGPT is normal and that's the blood picture of this baby. Where have I gone? Have I lost it somewhere? Yeah. That is the blood picture of this baby. Hardly any polychromasia you can see. No NRBCs, no evidence of hemolysis. Yet your pediatrician is asking, why is the bilirubin 14? What do I do? He's 24 hours old. Is my baby hemolyzing? Is my baby anemic or not anemic? Well, looking at the criteria, the baby is not anemic. WBC count is borderline high for a 24 hours neonate. And platelets are normal. Definitely the retic is high. Now the thing is that in children, in neonates, you may have compensated hemolysis. They will maintain their hemoglobin and yet the bilirubin is very high. And what will catch is the polychromasia in your smear or the retic count in these cases. So we must know what we are looking at according to the age of our children. At term, the hemoglobin is about 19. This is what is taken as anemia in the cord blood below this. MCV is always high most of the time in neonates, higher in more premature babies. 
hematocrit is similarly very high but look at the retic count it's only when they are very very premature that you have retic high otherwise at a term full term no normal baby you should not have a reticulocyte count over 5% so you have to evaluate your baby according to the days and how old is the baby okay let's see now he is born day 1 the retic has come down is 3.2 day 7 it is only 0.5% other parameters are also falling and suddenly as this 0.5% by 12 weeks the baby's hemoglobin has come down do we call this baby anemic no now that is the parameters how we interpret these cases wbc's nothing much they are little on the higher side always the birth neutrophils are high but within 7 days they are equal in babies that's their normal pattern site of sampling as i just mentioned is higher in capillary blood so you must compare your baby if you want to know whether the baby's hemoglobin is rising or falling please compare by the same method of sampling if it's a finger prick method you always collect from finger prick or heel prick whatever method you are using because that much variability may be there in the reading warm the site before lancing definitely helps because these are mostly sick babies their peripheral circulation has collapsed and when you take it from the finger prick it will definitely be higher so that's why it's better to warm it to come to the near venous level and as i said use the same site for comparison and on your reports document the site of sampling in that particular case difference in capillary and venous is more in seen in very low birth weight babies and during the first hours this difference may go up to 3.5 grams of hemoglobin so you can see how much difference if today you have taken a venous sample and it is 11 grams and yesterday you have done by heel prick method which was 14 grams will you call that the hemoglobin has fallen you should not comment on it because you look at the smear polychromasia has increased yes maybe an indication but otherwise two different sites of samples sampling should not be compared especially in neonates and more specially in very very sick low birth weight babies